Do the Jags have it in them to find magic in the draft? I'll tell you what I mean by that on this episode of Locked On Jaguars. You are Locked On Jaguars, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me, Tony Wiggins, the host of the Locked On Jaguars podcast, where it's your team every day. We thank you for making us your first listen. We are free to subscribe to over on YouTube at our YouTube page that is Locked On Jaguars. Make sure when you get over there, all you do is hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and then hit that bell so you receive notifications each and every time we drop an episode. Make sure wherever you listen to audio podcasts, go there every single day to make sure you do not miss an episode of Locked On Jaguars. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks. If your bet wins, visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Shout out to the everydayers that join the show every single day. We definitely appreciate you joining us and if you're not an everyday you definitely can be just by joining us every single day the way the everydayers do all right so let's get into it draft magic that's my word that's my term not theirs not anybody else's and i'm not just trying to claim exclusivity i am though trying to make sure that we don't start making a mountain out of a molehill and come up with terms like uh what 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 is the one uh the one that generational talent. That's not what I'm trying to do. I don't mean magic as, as in terms of labeling something. I mean it in a way, a figurative way. And I'm going to explain it right now. Other teams have drafted guys in the first round all the way through the draft. First round guys aren't magic. All right. That's easy. That should be easy scouting, but other teams have drafted guys from the second round on all the way through in recent history, they've drafted players that in two or three years, you say, I can't imagine this team without them. Whatever we got to do, we got to keep them. We can't let them get away and have it be unanimous and universally thought of that way, not only with their own fan base and their coaches and their owners, but around the league. The Jags have rarely had that happen in their entire history, not to mention the last few years under Trent Baalke. They needed to happen because when you do that, that's when you start to venture yourself into real good team building, real good development, real good uh, bang for your buck, if you will, when it comes to picking guys in the NFL draft. I hope this year they started. This is why I've been talking about how good the draft is beyond the first round. And I won't let anybody tell me that it's not a good draft because the people that don't think it's a good draft are people that usually think every draft is bad or they're building in a built-in excuse so they don't have to hit on late picks. And that could, you know, could eventually lead to them having an excuse, making an excuse. And as we know, that stuff will permeate through your team and through your locker room and eventually They'll play like one, and then they'll start needing excuses to explain how they got to where they got to on the field every single Sunday. So we want to alleviate that as much as we can. And I think it's it's fair to ask how teams end up with players that they did not take early that are just must-haves, right? For instance, I'll give you a perfect example. Jaguar fans are trying to figure out if they need to draft a uh, trade for T Higgins. They need to be the team that has T Higgins. You got to be the team that has a guy that everybody wants, somebody that you drafted, albeit in the second round and developed. And now everybody wants to treat him like he's the top five pick. That, that's what the Jaguars need to be doing. When you go out and sign Eric Armstead and you say, he's the answer. He might be. But it's okay if you draft your own Eric Armstead and have him for nine years the way the 49ers did. 
it's all right for you to want Brandon Ayuk and, and get mad that Trent Baalke won't trade the farm for him. And that's fine. The 49ers, if they do move on from Ayuk, it'll be out of necessity because of money, but he'll also be the dude that they decided that they're willing to move on from. And look at you, Jacksonville. You want to be right there for front and center and give them whatever they want or whatever you believe uh, the value is and then pay them a whole bunch of money. At some point, it reminds me of the movie Bad Boy. Are you a buyer or a spender? Is it guns or butter? Are you, it, it, what, what side of commerce are you on? And historically, the Jaguars have been on the bad side of that. They have, they they just have not been they they have not really been what you would call a farm system for the NFL. How many guys that they didn't re-sign this year were players that every team felt like somebody felt like they just had to overpay for or they had to they, I gotta have them. In fact, the couple of times that it had that it has happened, Jawan Taylor. And Jaguar fans like, oh, he overpaid. He stinks. Yeah, he stinks all the way to holding the trophy. And we sit here and we wonder why year after year after year, folks are so focused on winning the offseason and winning free agency. It's because they are missing an entire branch of what you would consider successful. And that is being able to draft, develop, and maintain your own guys. Believe it or not, folks, there are teams around the league that have guys on their team for seven, eight years. There are. To show you where the Jaguars are, there are people that are, are, are talking about Gabe Davis being the number one wide receiver and saying that that's good enough and he's good enough to be the X. And I, I talked to people in Buffalo last year and they were saying we need a wide receiver. And they had one. They had an all-pro guy and Stephon Diggs. He needs, we need somebody else. So we have to be careful of when I know in, in every team's trash can be somebody else's treasure. I get all of that. But we really, really have to be careful with how we make ourselves so excited about something that everybody else was in they they weren't in no hurry to keep them. In fact, while they were while while Gabe was there, they were talking about they needed another receiver. At some point, you got to be right, and the Jaguars could very well be right about Gabe, and I think Gabe's going to be a good addition because he gives this team something they didn't have, and that's somebody who catches the ball in the deep seam in the middle of the field and can get deep. But I think we ought to be realistic also and, and understand that from a realistic perspective, the Jaguars just flat out have to do better at finding homegrown talent when it's not obvious, like a top-10 pick, they have to make sure that they have guys that other people want. And that's not your goal. Your goal is to get guys that are good so you can win. And if you're doing it correctly, the evidence of that is you can't keep everybody. But right now, Jaguar fans will fight you over a, a dude that is really as average as the day is long. And that's because of what they're used to. So what I'm going to talk about for the rest of the show, segment two, we're going to look at a historical view of how the Jaguars have drafted and I want to go through it one by one for as long as we can go back to show you on one hand how many times the Jaguars have had somebody that the rest of the league felt like they just had to get them away from Jacksonville. Then I'm going to talk about the effects of bad drafts and this psyche and, and what it does to the psyche of the fans where they just accept anything. Just hit on one guy. That's all we need. We don't need anything else. And while getting used to that could leave you in the same place where you've been this entire time. We're going to talk about that and more, a historical look at the way the Jaguars have drafted and why they just can't seem to find the magic that everybody else wants. And we'll talk about how that's the tail running from the cat and the cat chasing the tail and it's a circular motion and they never get anywhere. We'll discuss it here on Locked on Jaguars. I have to let you know about eBay Motors, passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, 
and more. Whether you're in the speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Motors Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need and the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. All right, segment number two here on Locked On Jaguars, where it's your team every day. We thank you for making us your first listen. I got to let y'all know something, man, that's real, real important. As you know, Locked On has launched the first ever national 24-7 streaming channel, Locked On Sports Today. Baseball fans, mark your calendars for March 20th. That is today. It's 7 p.m. Eastern time for the Major League Baseball season preview coming exclusively to Locked On Sports Today on March 20th. At 7 p.m. Eastern Time, be the first to get local insight from the Major League Baseball experts of the Locked On Podcast Network. Find it on March 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. All right, so what we're talking about here is the Jaguars being able to find something that, that has evaded them for a long time, and that is magic in the NFL draft notable players that the Jaguars have had through the years that everyone that they drafted now that everyone uh you could see everyone around the league wanting them right and really wanting. we got to go all the way back to Tony Baselli and then Fred Taylor and then Rasheed Mathis and Maurice Jones Drew pop up and you'll see Jalen Ramsey I know y'all don't want me to mention Jalen, but I'm sorry. I will. Yannick Ngakwe should be, he should really be listed there. And, and I'll get into that in just for a reason. But because of the way it went down with the, the fans and their loyalty towards the team, and plus the, the fans really weren't that far removed from the Jaguars potentially going to the Super Bowl. If the Yannick Ngakwe situation happened right now, the fans would be so mad at the team it's not even funny because they're in a different situation. Plus, and this is why I want to get into this, there's a sentiment that back then you didn't want to pay Yannick because, quote unquote, all he did was rush the passer and he does not stop the run. And since he's left, the Jaguars have been chasing people and chasing the idea and the thought that they need to find people that can get after the quarterback. Be careful what you ask for. And when folks were talking about Trayvon being good against the run, they were saying, well, that doesn't matter. We don't pick a guy number one overall to be against the run. We want him to get sacks. So it 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 kills me that there's one, it's always the extreme, right? It, it's either we don't care about sacks or we don't care about the run. And it's the extreme and folks try to frame it and use draft position to justify it. Don't nobody care about draft position once they've already been picked. I just want y'all to know that it's not like a guy runs around on the field with draft position on, on, on his, on his Jersey. Can he play or can they not? And that's what, that's what I think sometimes is the thing that blindsides fans more than anything. And it's the, the expectations that they have because of what the players are attached to, as long as it's not like big numbers. Right. So if you say oh, you give a guy $20 million a year, he better be performing. Right. Ironically, the seven, eight million dollars or whatever it is that Trayvon Walker makes, he has earned that even in his rookie year when mostly he was a physical run stuffer who got after the passer a little bit. Right. He's earned that money. He was never not worth what they were paying him. He may have not given you the numbers that you wanted to see early in the draft. But let's talk about somebody that just did Josh Allen. You know, there are still people out there that think that if we lose Josh, we lose him. Doesn't matter. There are people that think like Cam Robinson, those guys, like they grow on trees. And it's true. And it's because of expectation and the narratives that we put on players. But the bottom line is 
I, I should be able to name more than that in 20 years, guys that the Jaguars drafted that you just didn't want to see go anywhere else. But I can't because there haven't been any. And there still aren't very many guys like that. It's like dudes you just can't live without. Like I hear people mumbling and, and grumbling that Justin Jefferson might get traded from Minnesota. And I know there are Minnesota fans that are like, are you kidding me? He needs to be a Viking forever. Or Jamar Chase. They wouldn't even think about trading jamar chase in fact they're not gonna let jamar chase get to a point where i don't believe where they have to franchise tag him you know who these guys are and you also know that in jacksonville you haven't had that many of them and i'm not even talking and if we get rid of the guys that were chosen in the first round it gets smaller and please don't let us get beyond the guys that were chosen in the second round because that includes mathis and that includes maurice jones drew so when we get to the third round, the, the, the biggest name is Yannick Ngakwe. And he's like, where are all of these dudes at? Like, for instance, people wanting to trade for LeJarrius Sneed. Where were those dudes picked? Where was where was LeJarrius Sneed and Tyreek Hill and all of these dudes? Where, where were they chosen? Like, Devontae Adams was that guy, but he was chosen in the second round. In the same draft as Allen Robinson and what's the kid's name that they chose from USC a few years ago? Who won the Belitnikoff Award who got hurt? You know what I'm talking about. I can't even think of his name right now. But the thing is, is how come the Jags can't find happy uh, magic? And I'm not even talking about it and calling it luck because luck is when opportunity meets preparation. But I mean magic. Like, I don't think it's just been the players. I think it's been the players and what you brought them in here and did to them and ask them to do, and mainly what they didn't do once guys got here, and that was put them in a position to be successful and develop. Look on the roster right now. With the guys that Trent Baalke has chosen in the last few drafts, I would say Trevor Lawrence is to Jaguar fans is in that category, but it's almost as if in, to be in that category, you have to have a, a want and desire from other people around the league that – are licking their chops if you hit the market. Now, if, Tre if Trevor hits the market, Trevor, if the Jaguars tried to trade Trevor Lawrence right now, they'd get three first-round picks for him. I'm, I'm just convinced of it, and I don't care what the naysayers say about it. With the money that they're giving some of these dudes right now and what they're doing to trade for some of these guys, are you telling me that Trevor Lawrence ain't going to get at least three first? Yeah, he would. Of course he would. Is Travis Etienne one of those dudes? Probably because of the nature of his position, he's not. Any other skill positions you can think of? Any other position on the offense, in fact, where you think of what teams would be like, whoo, man, I'd love to have that guy right there if he got loose. I don't think I can name one outside of the quarterback. That's a problem. It's a problem because that's who the team has to play with. The other problem is I'm talking about just the guys they pick. We're in draft season, so they have to start picking those guys and start retaining them. Go look on the defense. Trayvon's one. If Trayvon got loose right now, people they you can say people can say what they want to say. Folks would break their neck and bend over backwards to have Trayvon Walker. I'm talking about 32 teams would bend over backwards to have him on this in their starting lineup. That's just the way it goes. Josh, sure. In the market that that, that has gone on out there, would Josh have a, a real stout market? Absolutely, he would. Anybody else? Anybody breaking their neck before Hill Khan or Andre Sisko or Tyson Campbell just chomping at the bit? The way that they were, if like you made Jalen Ramsey, when you made Jalen Ramsey available and you, you immediately got an offer for two first round picks and a fourth that you negotiated, right? Where, where's the guys that the Jaguars drafted that other teams are just salivating to have over just the last few years? And to give Balky a little bit of a break, I even went as far back as the entire time this franchise has existed and he ain't the only one but we ain't talking about everybody else we're talking about him and right now i want them to find it do i have confidence that they can no i don't but that's me i'm gonna still leave room for it to happen on the other hand you the fan do you have any confidence that they're going to get it done this year that they're going to find that magic and what they do what will happen if they do find it they're going to get that player they're going to puka nukua them way into a player that's going to be here and let the whole league know after his performance this year that for the next three or four years, they're going to have to deal with him. And he's going to be a, something that, that's going to leave either offensive, defensive coordinators of the opposing team sitting up all night wondering how in the hell we're going to stop him. 
They just haven't done it. I don't think they're going to be able to do it. I'm going to tell you the effects of drafting that way, what it means to the organization, what it means to the fans, what it means to the perception of the organization, and the only thing that will change it. I'm going to tell you about it in just a second here on Locked on Jaguar. Not before I tell you guys about FanDuel. That's right. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Good luck with that one. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's all one word, locked on, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Now, all the action really, really heats up tomorrow, so make sure you do your homework, study, and get this figured out and go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. All right, third and final segment here on Locked On Jaguars, where it's your team every day. We always thank you for making us your first listen. Listen, man, the effects of bad drafts, we all know what it means. You don't play well. You don't play as well as, as you hope, right? We also know it means uh, that there's a less chance that you're going to feel the need to retain those players if those players – don't match the salary that they think they deserve and whatever the market says. You're going to have a firsthand knowledge. I'm not re-signing that dude for that amount of money. After a while, it becomes problematic. You don't get mulligans for not re-signing guys that you actually picked and developed. It's almost like it's backwards, and it's almost like as if uh, that's just not cool, man. It's like, well, he ain't, he ain't earned that money. We ain't giving, and fans will go there. Yeah, he ain't worth that. Don't repay him. Let him go. We can find somebody else. That's what you're saying about your own guy, the dude that this team picked, the dude that this team trained up. The dude. So now he doesn't have value. You have to ask yourself what happened. Was it like that during the draft, or did it happen once he got into this system and now he's a ruined player because? His formative years were done incorrectly. All of those things matter. It also matters to fans. I heard something today early on radio that they just hit on one guy. It'll be fine. Just hit on the 17. Get him a good corner, a guy that's that's, that's going to be real good and, and maybe sign a wide receiver, and that's it. So it puts you in this mindset, and, and, and I'm not throwing shade at the, 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 the people that said it because it's true. But what it does, it hits you with reality and lets you know that, man, we're so bad off about this stuff that we're hoping for something that in the grand scheme of things, the things that we're hoping for, if that happens every single year, we're not having any success. Because I got a news flash for you. That's exactly what has happened the last three years under Trent Baalke. They have hit on their first round picks and missed on everything else. So if that happens, this is more of the same, in my opinion. They hit on Trevor, they hit on ETN, they hit on Trayvon. Then last year they hit on Anton Harrison. Them hitting on the seventh, the 17th overall pick this year ain't no different than anything you've seen, especially if they don't hit anything else. It's, it's the same thing and is no different from anything that the Jaguars have done over the last three years and, and probably throughout their history. So when are we going to start wanting things to be better and wanting things to change? It appears that what we want is – we want things to remain the same, but we we hope to have more success. And I thought somebody described that as the definition of insanity, which is doing the same thing and expecting a different or better result. At some point, you're not going to be able to get around the fact that no matter how good you do in free agency, no matter how many master classes that people say something is or how much favor or, or, or how quiet the natives are, and, and, and how restful they are, considering they're usually restless, and how much you can quiet them down with new names and new shiny toys that cost way more money than just being able to draft players better does. At some point, we'll realize that are we playing just for re relevance 
and hope that we can stumble into a championship? Or are we really going for championships and, and, and all the while being able to use little minor victories that happen every single day that we know if we take a macro view of this entire situation, that those things in and of themselves do not guarantee or even not even guarantee even point remotely towards a team that's going to ever win a championship there's a certain things in a certain way that you got to move in order to be able to do that and taking a draft and anything after day one and going doesn't matter you ain't gonna matter this team will never matter late in january early february if anything that happens after the first round of the draft doesn't matter that's just that's that's not even math, but that's that's football math. And if you ask me that that's football, that's 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 a mystery and an equation that we don't have the equation to. Actually, we don't have we, we can't get to that answer without the formula to get there. And I, and I think we know what the formula is, but we just don't have it in our repertoire. And we, we, we can't manufacture it. We can't find it anywhere. So while we're all being optimistic and we're all sitting here hoping for the best what we should be hoping for is that it's something that i think most people believe it ain't gonna happen no matter how much we hope for it and what that is is hitting on these draft picks and finding people in the draft on day two and three that play so well that down the line people are clamoring for them the way that the jaguars seem to clamor for other people's developmental talent we are buyers in this world of commerce the jaguars are not sellers we have to be able to pick and choose the things that we want to retain and make sure that those things are really really good and get to the point where we're letting go good players because it's for the greater good of the team and because drum roll please because we know we'll be able to replace them because we have a track record of being able to do it so I hope the Jaguars find some some help late. I hope Javon Baker is a guy that they look at and say, we'll bring him in as a fourth or a fifth wide receiver. And two years from now or a year from now, when it's time for us to make a decision on Christian Kirk or Zay Jones or whoever the other receivers are, this is a dude that we can't keep off the field. I hope they find an offensive lineman, maybe a Christian Mahogany or somebody in the third or fourth round, and they say, you know what? That's the dude that's going to replace Brandon Sheriff. And if Cooper Hodges wants to battle it out with him, then fine. Then we'll have two of them because iron sharpens iron. And we'll move one over to the left-hand side if he's not working out very well. They have to start drafting people that they can't keep off the field after day one. And a lot of y'all thought it was Antonio Johnson until they go out and get a replacement for Antonio Johnson in, in, in Savage. From Green Bay. When are the Jaguars going to have their own guys that they take and they plug in? When, are, when is Chad Moomer going to be so good that they have to go ahead and let Foy Oluwakan go? When? When is Devon Hamilton so good that they just go, we ain't going to waste all that money or we ain't going to spend money going out to get a running mate of his. We'll just do what we did with him. We'll go draft another one. When is Tyson Campbell so good that they go, oh, we got to go ahead and get him under an extension right now and play him top dollar so we don't have to deal with that next year? When is Andre Sisco going to be so good the Jaguars already know that they're going to re-sign him and get it over with and he's going to be a, a future Pro Bowl and one of the best safeties in the league? The way the Bengals did with Jesse Bates before they franchise tagged him and then they let him go the next year because they used the first-round pick on Daxton Hill to replace him. When on earth are the, the Jaguars going to get to the point where they're selling more than they're buying? Hopefully it's this year. Go through the draft and find your prospects and guys that you think can be late round gems and wins for Jacksonville and hope and pray that Trent Baalke finds the magic and he can do the exact same thing. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free fire tv channels app locked on sports today is here for you 24 7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of locked on plus our national shows covering every league find locked on sports today now available on the free fire tv 
Channels app. You guys take care of each other, man. As the draft gets closer, we the information the free major eight free agency is slow slowed down. We got all these workouts going. I think the Jaguars already know what they're gonna do. I don't, I don't know if the board is set or not, but we'll just see if anything starts to change and shake out as we move closer and closer to the NFL draft. We'll keep you updated here on Locked On Jaguars. You guys just do me a favor, take care of each other. We'll see you next time on Locked On Jaguars.